to understand today's gospel, we have to kind of back up a little. By that, I mean we have to see a couple of chapters before this gospel passage to really get the flow of where Matthew is taking us. So b- prior to this, Jesus has entered into Jerusalem. He's gone to the temple and found that it was filled with money changers and commerce and all kinds of things except prayer. And as we know the, of the account, he goes in and tips over everything and causes all kinds of chaos within the temple. And so he leaves after a few days, he comes back. And now he's in front of the Pharisees. Now you got to admit, it's kind of awkward or, or difficult what the Pharisees must have felt at that time. Because here Jesus comes into the temple for a second time. You've witnessed all the turning of the tables and all the chaos that he caused. And so you think that the, the Pharisee would have two choices. One, to go to Jesus and say, listen, after what you did the last time in your temple, in our temple, you're not welcome. We don't want to see you here. Or the Pharisees might have gone to the Romans and said, listen, this guy is a troublemaker. We don't want him in our temple. Get rid of him. Put him in jail. We don't need him. But Jesus enters the temple and starts preaching and teaching. He even starts healing people. And so the Pharisees come up and they don't ask him to leave. They don't get the Roman soldiers. They ask him a very simple question. Where do you get your authority? Where do you get your authority? That's kind of an an age old question that they pose to Jesus. Where do you get your authority? You know, even today we're asked that same question. Where do we get our authority? You know, in some cases, you know, it's uh, my wife gives me the authority. Thank you, dear. In other cases, it's the people around us. But here Jesus answers the question and says, well, listen, I won't answer your question that you answer my question. And my question is, was John a prophet from heaven or is John a prophet made by man? Because you see, John the Baptist had come forward and said, Jesus was the Messiah. So immediately we know he's got the, his authority from God, God, his father. And so we, we have this image now of Jesus asking the question and the Pharisees saying, it's best if we don't answer the question. Now that was their job. They were the ones to decide who was a true prophet and who was a false prophet. And they gave that up. They said, well, we don't want to answer that question because, well, one will have to admit you're the Messiah and the other will still have to admit to the people around us that John wasn't a prophet. So they were in this bind, as it were. And so Jesus doesn't answer the question at all. In my life, I've been under authority much of my military life. It's just how it was. But then there was a time when I got a letter from our beloved Canadian Revenue Agency. Great bunch of folks. Lovely letterhead, beautiful, all bright. That's another story. Anyway, they said, we want three documents from you. Now, I, this was in Ottawa. I had been ordained for roughly 15, 16 years. And the three documents they wanted from me was my graduation diploma from seminary, my ordination certificate from the Diocese of Calgary, and my license from the military uh, bishop ordinary. So I gathered these things up. Now, you, now you got to understand, I don't know how your university or college or high school diplomas look like, but the one that you get from Trinity College is massive. It's like you can't even put it on a wall. It's just that big. It's, it, it's a beautiful piece of parchment, but you can't do So I had images of this guy trying to photocopy this huge document and not even knowing what it stood for. But... I went down to the, the revenue agency. I went in, I met the fellow, he took the documents. And I said, what, what do you need these documents for? Well, we had to find out what authority you had to be a priest. 15 years after ordination, you're now asking the question? Okay, it's that fine. So I, I did all that and got all that done. 
But you know, in our lives even today, if you walk into my office, there is a letter there that's in a nice little container that from the bishop that says, yes, John can journey with you. I am giving my authority to journey with you. And so that's how I find myself here. I'm journeying with you. But Jesus turns this all on its, on its head, doesn't he? He says, now that you won't answer my question and I won't answer yours, he gives us the parable of the farmer who goes to his first son and says, will you go out into the field and work? And the son says, nope, I don't feel like going out there. But then as the day goes on, he says, well, maybe I should go. But by then the father has gone to the second son and asked the question. And the second son has said, sure, I'll go. Absolutely. But doesn't go. Kind of reminds you when you ask your children to clean their rooms. Oh, yes, of course, I'll clean my room tomorrow. Maybe the next day. But the whole thing about this, is, this whole parable is simply how action and faith come together. Think about that. Action and faith come together. You see, the first son was asked, he didn't want to, he's the person who knows about God, but doesn't want to shine, doesn't want to be out in the open, just sort of wants to be quiet in the back. And so we have that image, don't we? He knows the power of the Spirit. He has the Word of God working in him, but he says, I just don't want to get involved. And so then he gets involved slowly and slowly and slowly, but he's always in the back. And then there's the other person who, well, they know the word of God, but they don't want to participate in anything. And so there's no action. They have the word of God, but no action. And the other is they, they, have the, they don't have the word of God, but they, they, they have the action. And so you've got these two images coming together. Now here at Holy Trinity, we are really, really blessed. We are truly blessed because we have so many people who have feel, feel the word of God, get the word of God, and participate in the life of our church. And that's great. We have all kinds of ministries. We've got all kinds. We've got the children. We've got the, the small ministries. The list goes on. The repair people, the tech people. The list goes on and on. But if you're sitting there going, well, how can I participate? Just ask the spirit which is working in you. Just to give you a little nudge into the direction. There's prayer ministries. There's all sorts of ministries happening here. The 55 plus ministry. And if you step into these ministries, then the talent that God has given you will rise to the surface. There's the music ministry. I keep, there's, there's so many happening. And most of you are involved in some sort of ministry here. And if you have any questions about the ministry, go ask a person who's involved in it. Or... If you suddenly get a feeling for a ministry that you don't see here happening, come to me, ask me about it. What did I would think? Because the spirit moves us all in different ways, but we all come together under the authority of God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy ghost. Now people will say, well, you know, what authority do you have to come together? I just said it. The authority of God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit. And that, that, that is played out in our baptism. In our baptism, we join together, don't we? We are all one through the baptism, which means that our ministries are interlocked. And with that, great things happen. So I'd ask you to think about that. Think about how each one of us through our baptism, which is a, a visible sign, we've all said that we want to participate in the life of our church. And with that, let us step forward into the ministries that are all around us. Just pick one. And you can do one this month. Try another one the next month. Just see where God calls you through the power of the Spirit. And for me, well, I'm here to journey with you. So come and ask me questions. And I'll point you in the direction of someone who might know a little bit more about the ministry that's taking place here. Amen.